Hello, bass family, and welcome to Everything Bass. Today, we are talking about hammer-ons and pull-offs. I had made the assumption um, in a previous video that everyone knew about hammer-ons and pull-offs, and that was bad on me because I got some comments and, and questions asking about it. So I'm gonna do a quick lesson on what it means. What are pull-offs, what are hammer-ons, and how we can put them into our plane. So um, it might be helpful to you uh, if uh, you're a subscriber to my Patreon account to go right now and download the PDF called Hammer-Ons and Pull-Offs. Uh, if you're not a subscriber, I hope you consider it because it's a way for me to actually get the stuff that's on my music stand onto your music stand and I think makes the lessons not only more effective, but then when you're not in front of your uh, computer screen or your phone and you want to practice, um, you can just print everything out, put them into a binder, and, and you're, you're good to go. So I hope that you consider that. Plus the funds uh, for the monthly subscription really helps finance growing the channel, and that's what really my main focus right now is getting everything based to be everything better. So uh, hammer-ons and pull-offs. Well, simply a hammer-on, let's start there, is when you pluck a note and you push down, a, a, keep that note down, and you push down another finger to like shorten the string and raise the pitch. So that's a half step. Now you notice I'm not lifting the first finger. I'm keeping that down, which is great because by keeping that down, the string's actually closer to the fingerboard, making it take less effort to get a good hammer on. So let's isolate that. And we don't wanna become um, muscle memory dependent on just one finger for our hammer on. So we wanna be able to hammer on off of every finger. So go to your seventh fret on the G string. We're gonna pluck that note and start by hammering on four times uh, a half step. So we're gonna go to the eighth fret. Now you can do two things. Initially, try it this way. If this is new to you, pluck the lower note, then hammer on, get that second note, let it be clear, then go back and pluck again, hammer on, pluck, hammer on, pluck, hammer on. As this gets uh, more comfortable for you, try just plucking once and hammering on four times. Like that. Kind of a slow trill. Now we, that's, that's getting comfortable with our middle finger and doing hammer ons. Let's try it with the ring finger. This is now seventh and ninth fret. And, you, and then the pinky. This is seventh and tenth fret. You might think the pinky is going to take a lot to develop because might, you might think it's weak. But there's something about it's, it's like being a shorter finger. It seems more rigid when I t it, like from very early on in my bass playing, I was able to do pinky hammer ons very easy. So a hammer on, and you can just kind of experiment with that. And now for the written page, that's where I what I just played is what's on the page. But you can hammer on anywhere, and I want you to. I want you to go low. You can do the jaws thing and just get used to it. But remember to always hammer on these two fingers these two fingers and these two fingers. Um, okay, so now pull-offs. Pull-offs are the opposite direction. And there's a little different mechanic involved. Let's go back to our friends, the seventh and eighth fret on the G string. To execute a pull-off, both fingers need to be down because we're gonna start with the higher note, but we, ha we can't do this because we're gonna create the second note simply by pulling off. Now, you can't just raise the finger. Like I'm plucking, I can't just raise the finger. That, that's a very quiet pull off. We want to kind of drag the finger or that's where it gets its name. You're pulling down on the string a little bit. Now what you guys might not be able to see, I'm not sure if I can get this on the camera, is I'm kind of plucking, I'm kind of plucking. Now just like before, we want to do it with every finger. So we're going to do four with these. for the pull-off exercise is I, I wrote um, where I alternate every time. I alternate, so it sounds like this. I'll go eighth fret, ninth fret, 10th fret, ninth fret. And every time I'm plucking the first note, pulling off, pluck, pull off, pluck, pull off. Once again, once that feels comfortable, and I'm doing it on the G string because that's our thinnest string. If you have a, a, a six string bass, a seven string bass, you know, go to the, the, the easiest string to manipulate and uh, just practice that, but then move it to the heavier string so you can get used to like how you're gonna have to adjust the technique to be able to execute it. 
Now lastly, I combine hammer-ons with pull-offs. Uh, on the sheet music, you'll see I use HO, hammer-on, PO, pull-off. So on the last line, you see ho-po, ho-po, ho-po. That's a hammer-on pull-off. And that's combining the techniques. And it's very cool sounding. So in this case, it's gonna be, I'm gonna pluck the seventh fret, hammer on, pull off. Then I'm gonna pluck the seventh fret, hammer on to the, uh, the ninth fret, pull off. Pluck, hammer on to the 10th fret, pull off. And it's, now this is kinda cool. Now that's what's written, except I played a mistake there. Uh, but, but what's those basic, skills or, or you're getting them down and you sound pretty good and your hand feels strong try this and this is a, a very good isometric style like well maybe it's not isometric but it's a good dynamic exercise to, to develop your strength and your independence in your fingers you're going to pluck just the first note which is the seventh fret then you're going to hammer on pull off but without replucking hammer on pull off without replucking hammer on pull off and then hammer on pull off and you're going to go you've heard this with a lot of like rock guitar lines this kind of technique. So I only pluck the first time and then I just let the hammer-ons do all the work. Cool. Uh, so this is a good like primer onto the basic hammer-on pull-off techniques. If you guys are studying um, the videos I'm doing for slap and the videos I'm doing for like uh, sample bass lines, you're going to see hammer-ons and pull-offs all over them. It's a really cool kind of legato technique. It adds a variation to our, our, our pizzicato playing that can really like make the line slinky or sexy or, or just even quick trills that, that add a lot of dynamic energy. But hammer-ons and pull-offs are really simple to get down. Um, I should say, if your string action is really high, maybe you haven't had your bass in to be checked out and the strings are really far apart from the fingerboard, they're really up here and not close to the fingerboards, you might find everything hard to do. Um, it's worth it to go to your local guitar shop that has a repair guy and just have them every once in a while, if you're not able to do it yourself, take it in and have the action set up, maybe do it, time it for the new strings to be put on, have them check the intonation, just so your bass is the best it can be uh, and it supports your efforts instead of fights you on the efforts. Um, plus, I totally believe in uh, supporting local repair shops. Um, uh, I have one here, Nicholson Music in Folsom, California. That's uh, my uh, favorite repair shop. They do all the works on my instruments. And, um, and if your action's set correctly, you'll find that hammer-ons and pull-offs are really quite easy to do. Um, if your action's high, everything's going to be hard. You can ultimately end up hurting your hands as you're trying to really physically manipulate these. If the action, action's high enough, your bass won't play in tune really well because you're actually going to be pulling it sharp by, by fretting the notes. Um, that's an extreme case, but I've seen it happen. So uh, that is our uh, hammer-ons and pull-offs primer. Uh, now, for today's encore item, um, a guy, a bass player who's near and dear to my heart, who's been an inspiration to me for quite some time, um, and I actually was fortunate enough to interview him for Bass Frontiers magazine when I was the editor of that magazine. And that is John Patitucci. This album is called Sketchbook. Uh, you know, he's another artist where you could just pick kind of, just reach into a bag of his CDs and pull it out and go, hey, here's something great. I have never heard anything he's done be less than stellar. Uh, John has a unique way to present really intricate music, really deep music, but in a flow that feels so attainable and so like you listen to it and you're like, this is so like, beautiful you're not caught up on the technique necessarily you're not like uh, it's not some histrionics it's just everything he does is musical everything he does is musical um, again there's so many uh, wonderful pieces that you could point to um, on the CD that would be well worth checking out but um, I'd just like to bring up uh, an upright piece a solo upright piece called Backwoods um, this was a song that um, has always been there when my life is spiraling out of control. And if you've never had that happen, then you know, God bless you. You're, um, I, I'm, I'm really envious of you. But I think pretty much we all can realize that sometimes when there's a death in the family, when there's uh, other great losses, when there's just your heart's been hurt, um, big disappointments in life, I think we as musicians, music is medicine. And one of the greatest um, pain relievers for me has been Backwoods. 
this upright piece is just so flowing and beautiful and is recorded amazingly. Um, if you don't have a really great sound system for your stereo, headphones it and just close your eyes and listen to Backwoods and just get lost in it. I'll always just have a debt I can never repay to John for what he's done for my life with, by releasing such great music, by being such a great um, role model as a player and just by uh, making the world a better place. Uh, so if you don't know John Patitucci, check him out. Check out all his music. Just for the sake of having one tangible thing I can show you, I chose Sketchbook because of Backwoods, basically. Um, but check out his work with uh, Chick Corea's Electric Band. That'll blow your mind. That'll melt your face right off of its moan structure. Um, and if you see that he's coming to your town, either as a clinician or a performer, you know, uh, do whatever it takes. Go see him. And I, I promise you, it'll be great. You could be the most punk of all punk rock bass players in the world, and I would still say, go see John. Go see John, and it'll make you a better player and probably make your life a lot better that you get experience him live. Okay, well, there you have it. So hammer-ons and pull-offs, please just work on them. Let me know if there's any questions. If you want me to do like a follow-up, maybe with some more intricate patterns, I'd be glad to do it. Just suggest it down in the comments section below. Um, and it means a lot to me if you could like this video. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, I'm, I'm a pretty active uh, content developer. I'm trying to put up content every weekend. So please just hit the subscribe button and then um, tap on the uh, bell uh, icon next to it. And that will notify you every time there are new lesson videos up or whatever. If I do a new interview or, or anything, any news that I have for you, any post, you'll be notified. Uh, if you want to get all the support materials for the lessons uh, to make the lessons more valuable and also have some takeaways that you can kind of, you know, so you don't always have to be practicing in front of the computer screen, um, please support the channel by going to patreon.com forward slash everything base. And there for a very low monthly fee, you actually get access to all of my content. So whenever I upload a video, I upload whatever support materials go with it. And they'll, um, the posts on Patreon will be the title of the video. So hopefully it'll be easy to find. Um, this is a learning process for me too. I've never done something like this. So if you can make suggestions of what would make the lessons more powerful for you, please let me know. I, I really wanna make this um, a valuable part of your musical journey. And I can't wait for, to hear what you think about this lesson or previous lessons. Any lesson video that you watch, please, if you have questions, comments, if there's a way you've been able to um, like morph the lesson into something valuable to you, share it with us. We, you know, I want this to be a really great community of ideas and thoughts because then we all get better. And that's, uh, I think, what we all want to do is just be better bass players. I want to be better today than I was yesterday. And I want that of, of, for all you guys too. Um, so thank you so much for uh, supporting Everything Bass. And I look forward to seeing you on the next video.